Good day, everyone. My name is Dolores Schoback. I'm an endocrinologist at the University of California in San Francisco. And it's my pleasure to be with you today to talk about osteoporosis and where to look for that condition. What I hope we will accomplish in the next few moments is to identify the means to make the diagnosis of osteoporosis in our patients, to recognize secondary causes for low bone mass and fractures due to osteoporosis, and then explain briefly the recommendations for DEXA testing of our patients. So how do we diagnose osteoporosis in the clinical setting? Well, it certainly can be diagnosed if the patient presents to you with a fragility fracture, and if that patient is at risk for such fractures. Typically, it might be a postmenopausal woman, or it's another patient who's got risk factors or secondary disorders that put them at risk for having a fracture, such as estrogen deficiency, testosterone deficiency, chronic steroid therapy, or many, many other conditions that can affect the maintenance of bone mass in an individual. So there's a clinical diagnosis. In addition to that, one can make this diagnosis by densitometry, again, in the individual at risk for it. And if that individual has a bone density by T-score that meets the criteria set by the World Health Organization for the definition or diagnosis of osteoporosis. Well, in the United States and in many countries, we look to the International Society for Clinical Densitometry, the ISCD, for recommendations and the best evidence for who should be screened uh, by DEXA scanning for osteoporosis. And at least in the United States, based on their most recent guidelines on this in 2019, women 65 and over are recommended to be screened for osteoporosis. Younger women under 65, if they have a risk factor, they're low body weight, they have had a prior fracture as an adult, they're taking a medication on the list of concerns for low bone mass, or they have a condition that's associated with a rapid reduction in, in bone density. Women during the menopausal transition, again, if they have clinical risk factors uh, for uh, having accelerated bone loss ought to be considered. And in men, it's a bit of a controversial topic, but the um, ISCD recommends considering screening for osteoporosis in men that are 70 years of age or older and younger if, again, there's a risk factor. We also look to the U.S. Preventive Services Task Force for screening recommendations for many common conditions and among them osteoporosis is one. So they say bone density testing should be considered in women 65 and older, regardless of age or race, okay? And then in terms of younger women before the age of 65, if they've got enough risk, about a 9% risk by FRAX calculation of a major fracture, um, then consider screening them by DEXA scanning. In terms of men, the International Society for Clinical Densitometry doesn't feel the evidence really can allow them to make a recommendation for men. So what are some of the important clinical situations that put an individual at risk for low bone mass and premature fractures? And there are many of these, and, and I think it's um, important to realize when we're taking a history from a patient that so many things can contribute to the maintenance um, of, low, of bone min and mineral density. So lifestyle factors are important, calcium and vitamin D intake, uh, a history of falls, smoking, being excessively uh, thin. There are many genetic disorders. Uh, I've listed a few in the materials that you'll be seeing along with this presentation, but there are many that can cause low bone mass and predispose to fracture. Low sex hormones in women and also in men can do it. Many endocrine disorders like Cushing's, hyperthyroidism, hyperparathyroidism, both forms of diabetes, both type one and type two can predispose to low bone mass and fractures. And then many GI disorders, celiac disease, inflammatory bowel disease, malabsorption, prior surgeries, and so forth, many disorders. In addition, hematologic disorders like multiple myeloma, various blood cancers and bone marrow cancers can, can be associated with fractures and low bone mass. And then a large number of autoimmune diseases like rheumatoid arthritis, ankylosing spondylitis, many others, 
as well as neurologic conditions like Parkinson's disease in both women and men and uh, multiple sclerosis in others. And then there are a lot of conditions that really cross these different organ system boundaries like HIV, chronic lung disease, heart failure, kidney disease, and so forth. And then of course, let's not forget that medications that a patient might be taking can certainly put them at risk. And there, that list is, is quite long. And I'll just highlight that men with a history of using androgen deprivation therapy in the treatment of prostate cancer, that is certainly one very important um, medication that can lead to low bone mass. And similarly in women, aromatase inhibitors in the breast cancer setting. But there really are many um, medications uh, that can affect the bone and that should be carefully looked at. Now in the diagnostic evaluation of a low bone mass, we of course use our clinical assessment tools, our history, our physical, and our careful assessment of risk factors in that individual patient. If you can get it, and this varies from country to country, a DEXA scan is very valuable in assessing the quantitative state of bone mass and, and overall risk. The lab evaluation, we don't really know what the cost-effective workup, if you will, is for osteoporosis, but we certainly uh, often obtain the basic chemistries, vitamin D, parathyroid hormone, and so forth. And then depending on the situation, some of the endocrine labs, like uh, gonadotropins, prolactin, estradiol, testosterone for men, and so forth. And then if there's malabsorption present or, or being considered a 24-hour urine, uh, calcium can be very helpful. And then depending on the circumstances uh, of that individual patient, you might consider other testing for the specific condition that that patient uh, presents to you. And then finally, we use the FRAX algorithm very often in clinical care. Um, it's, sim it's simple and straightforward and is, has been adopted pretty much worldwide. That algorithm gives us two major 10-year fracture risk uh, estimates. One is for a major osteoporotic fracture and there are four fractures that go into that. And then the, there is also the 10-year risk of a hip fracture. And the clinical um, risk factors that go into the FRAX calculation are, are very straightforward. The, the presence of a prior osteoporotic fracture, being a smoker, uh, having rheumatoid arthritis, having used glucocorticoids, um, drinking more than three uh, alcoholic beverages a day, and then a parental history of a hip fracture, along with a femoral neck uh, T-score or bone mineral density. And you can even calculate FRAX without uh, that um, bone mineral density measurement uh, if need be. And then most countries now have intervention thresholds that have been determined that are appropriate for the population in that country. So FRAX is very helpful in uh, helping us to make the diagnosis. Just a word or two about pharmacologic treatment. This is also going to vary from country to country, uh, but and uh, some of the recommendations uh, that I've, I am focusing on now with you relate to guidelines that have come out uh, through uh, United States organizations. Uh, but the patient should be, as we've already reviewed, appropriately evaluated. And then for postmenopausal women, where there, there is the most um, uh, data and evidence, um, one should consider treatment uh, in uh, women who've had a hip or vertebral fracture, whether that vertebral fracture is clinical or picked up by imaging. Uh, patients who've had T-scores documented that are below negative 2.5, meeting therefore the World Health um, Organization criteria for osteoporosis by DEXA. And then in those um, women and men who have um, osteopenic T-scores and are over age 50, if the FRAC score for the United States, at least, is um, greater than 3% for the 10-year hip fracture probability or greater than 20% for the major osteoporotic uh, fracture risk, then, then pharmacologic therapy should at least be considered and discussed with that individual. So those are just some of the recommendations, the broad recommendations, if you will, for um, initiating therapy for osteoporosis. And I refer you to several very uh, well 
um, done guidelines in this area, which have been done over the last three or four years, uh, for more information on this topic. And I thank you for your attention.